Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of Sacred Attention Therapy and the Center for Human Awakening. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about Sacred Attention Therapy, the Center for Human Awakening, and our video blog series, please visit our website at www.centerforhumanawakening.com and center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. These video blogs are intended to be spontaneous, unscripted dialogues between myself and other participants of the Center Study Group. And our guest today is the beautiful Lorna Bryant. And we welcome Lorna back to talk to us, uh, to continue to share with us her beautiful sharings in the study group through a sanctuary with Eden. And so now I would like to invite Lorna to come on screen. Hello, Lorna. Hello, Robert. Nice to be with you. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> so we continue this this wonderful opportunity to to share uh, between us, but with the community watching and listening, some of your beautiful teachings. Um, and I picked out some, and we'll continue to pick out some uh, for these video blogs and short ones. Uh, yeah. relatively short ones. Some of them can beautifully go on to tell a story, um, a lengthy poem, if you want to call it that. Uh, mm -hmm. I often wonder what it would be like to hear some of these to music. I know with your, your background in music that... I've got that planned. Okay. <laughs> what a gift that would be. Yeah, the, yeah, but now I've got that in the pipeline. <laughs> good. Yeah, and maybe you know, reading them to music, some of them as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Storytelling. If you, do, if you do do that, let us know. Let us know. I will. It, it shouldn't be long. I've got someone that will uh, is going to do it with me. Very good. Yes. So the teaching I want <clears throat> to share today and talk about a little bit begins with a quote that overlays a graphic and the quote says love is the sacred pulse of life it is the beat that never stops and the breath that never dies and you go on with an explanatory note you share it is clear oh so clear i am no thing i have no thing I want no thing. I have nothing to offer except love. I can do nothing but love. I feel nothing but love. Through all the suffering, all the pain and tears, my eyes still see only love. I do not understand bitterness or regret. I taste only the divine benevolence of love. All my senses bathe in love's subliminal fragrance. If you come to me, then you will be loved. If you stand apart from me, you will be satiated or saturated with my, in my love. For all that I am and all I have ever been is pure, abundant love. I have come from love to be in love and to ultimately return to love. Love is my birthplace, my home, and my final resting place. It has always been my destiny and the final destination. I am love. It's beautiful. Thank you. So love is the sacred pulse of life. It is the beat that never stops and the breath that never dies. Is That's that it, really? <laughs> so, so simple. So, so simple. simple. And yet so hard for so many people. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's beautiful what you just shared because I'm reminded so many times in one of the non-dualistic teachings um, that I immerse myself in and, and share with the community is it, it says the teaching is simple 
it's just not easy. No. <laughs> and and it's a similar it's a similar application here. Um, to be in that state of love, to be love is real simple. I... It's just not it's just not always or it sometimes doesn't always seem to be easy. No. No, it, it is easy, it is simple, and yet to the human being, in the human being state, and to the mind, mm. it can seem very complex, and, and it can feel very complex. So, um, I have always struggled with uh, not, um, trying to understand how people cannot feel love. Some people will say to me, I cannot feel love. Mm -hmm. I don't know what love is. And obviously from a psychological point of view and a, and a point of view of what people may have been through in their lives as children, um, as they've been developing, um, people go through all sorts of, of terrible things sometimes and I can see from that obviously from that from the relative experience of life that mm. people can be so hurt and so um, damaged that they that they kind of become numb there's a numbness and it feels like they can't feel love, they can't accept it, mm. nor can they give it, that's what it feels like for them. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand that, um, but from a, a, from a non-personal um, perspective, a transpersonal, a sort of transcendental perspective, for me it's quite an alien thing to try to imagine not feeling love because that post I suppose you could say <laughs> um, it could be looked at on two levels as me writing about me or as as I writing about I am the big I am you know universal love mm -hmm. and all that it is um, and that's I think this the separateness between bringing the two together, the psychological, the, 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 the relative world, the impermanent world, where love seems to come and go and change forms and one minute you can feel in love and the one minute, next minute you can hate someone or despise them. And then joining that with a love that never changes, that is completely um, omnipresent, always present within us and without us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are of it and it is who we are um, and yet we somehow drift from it because we get too drawn into um, our personal experience of life. Mm -hmm. Get drawn into the form. And instead of the instead of staying in the content, yes, um, and the, the form, source. it or the source, and yeah, the form so often presents itself as another, yes, another Absolutely. form, and yes. most often as another being, our perception of another being. Of course, getting yeah. to the the core, some core spiritual teachings of the idea of separation. You know, yes. I am here, Rob, speaking to someone else out there called Lorna. Yes. Um, and that's only the truth in my mind to the extent that I make it so. Yes. Both my belief that I am Rob. Yes. And that you are Lorna. Yes. Um, and this form we get uh, drawn to. Uh, and we stay, we stay locked in. Yes, we do, because we, I think, we, um, 
as soon as we're born into this world, we're born into a world of a form of um, identity, and everybody soon develops that need for an, a separate identity by which they can um, relate themselves to others and others can relate to them and to develop a, a persona um, but it is a persona it's not it's developed it's not our natural state of being it's not source we, we're still connected with source we have with you know source within us we have consciousness we everything we do is is in consciousness of one level or another but um, that that innate connection with source that awareness of it in in our everyday lives becomes less and less as we become more and more attached to our personal identity mm -hmm. and that makes I think for a lot of people having an identity something to to be to say I am this this is me um, makes them feel secure but actually what tends to happen is that how many people actually do feel secure with their me um, and how many people spend their lives looking for more than me uh, and I think that the eternal search to, to become something and to um, achieve and to you know, we, I think we have a natural impulse, a natural, uh, we're naturally compelled to, to look for the best in life for ourselves, the best, the best life we can have, um, and to achieve, but I think we get the messages mixed up as to what achievement is, and what, and what he, being something is, um, and it's not enough it's not enough just to be um, an expression of source through the physical realm. It seems that people, um, if, if they only knew what that source contained, if they could only mm. bring that forth um, mm. and join it with their physical lives so that they're continually guided by that source, they're continually resting in that source, then life I think for everyone would be much um, more fluid mm -hmm. and effortless. Mm. But we become because we because we cling more to the identity than to the source. Um, I mean, you can't cling to the source because it's unclingable to. But mm -hmm. we cling to our identity, and mm. that separates us from the flow. And we become very much invested in planning our lives and searching for things and wanting for things mm -hmm. and yet how many people are really deep down uh, fully satisfied and have a, a real sense of who they truly are mm -hmm. it's interesting about a minute ago you shared something um, that I want to dive a little bit into and and that is the idea, it's not just about being, or mm. your words. Mm. And it resonated with me because I think once we have invited and surrendered to that, that, that state of source, that state of being, I think our work then is in extending that. And, you know, we began talking about love is the sacred pulse of life. It is the beat that never stops and the breath that never dies. It's, it's interesting for, for me to contemplate that the only thing in this existence that once we have it, the only thing we want to do is give it away is love. Yes. Uh, um, it, it, and it's, everything, everything else in its form, in its idolistic form, often we want to possess, we want to accumulate out of fear of what would happen if we didn't. Yes, and I think that fear is ultimately a fear of, of death, actually. 
isn't isn't all fear when we start to peel away the layers yeah. Yeah. it's that fear of death it is it's a clinging to things that that make life seemingly um meaningful and yet continually um we find that they are not meaningful and they do not bring us that sense that that we they do not fill that void that that many people feel when they're out chasing for more money, more uh, better jobs, mm -hmm. different relationships, um, and it's uh, that that void cannot be filled with things or possessions. We can't hold on to anything in this physical life because it's transient. Mm -hmm. um, you can't hold on to it. You, you can, can hold on to it, but it brings it often brings dis ease. Yes, yes, you can. Uh, I think it's the effort of holding on to it mm. that brings the dis ease. Because if you have to put effort and a lot of thought and energy into holding on to something that you believe will make you happy when it it actually isn't, mm. that is exhausting. And love shouldn't be and isn't in the real true sense of love mm. exhausting it becomes exhausting in relation in our human relationships when we misinterpret what love means when we want love to fill us to make us better when we want somebody else uh, when we cling to the idea or the ideal of somebody else or a relationship that will fill that void and then we soon find I mean, the honeymoon period is a is a classic period where I think actually there's a taste of of that um, beautiful mm -hmm. love that can mm -hmm. that does mm -hmm. exist. There's a taste of it for a short time, but then people would say reality. Uh, it's not my reality, but the reality of the physical world kicks in and. And all our insecurities start to brim to the surface. And instead of uh, self, uh, sort of self-observation and looking at your own um, issues that you're projecting onto your partner, you actually, it becomes a fight, it becomes a battle, and it becomes exhausting. And it's non-sustainable as a pure um, expression of love in a relationship. Mm. And hence, more and more these days people aren't staying together or they're at war with themselves but actually they're at war with each other but actually the war the real war is going on inside them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they they have no center they have no center and the only possible as you say stable permanent and um eternal infinite center is is love is the source from which we came and as I said in the quote which we will return to long after the body has mm. has, uh, mm. has decayed <laughs> you know it's it's nice to be able to practice it while we're here though oh yes it's nice to be given that opportunity I think practice it's practice it while we're here. I think it's why we're here, really. I indeed, mean, indeed. Other than other than the lessons that love teaches us, of course. But well, yes, we're here. yes. I mean, we have to, again. You've got the two kind of. You've got the the ideal of love um, of the perfect love, which actually does exist in the true sense of the word, mm -hmm. and then you've got the filtered versions of love that we. That we manage to, um, that we that we do we that we experience as we go through life with different relationships and relationships. A lot of people seem to think that challenging relationships or painful relationships are a bad thing, but actually they can be the the most they can be the most um, precious gift for self realization. And finding out what true love really is about, if you can stick with it. Um, these days, it's such a kind of um, disposable world that we just move on. Instead of staying put, staying with the feelings, staying with the challenges, <laughs> we just run 
to the next one, and it all happens again. Mm -hmm. um, but that that eternal love within us, that source love, mm. never never leaves us. We leave it to try and find something else mm. that uh, represents it. But yes, I think we're here to learn how to love in human form with all the challenges and all the problems that come along while we're here. Um, and you can, if you, if you can, if you can take um, a moment, just one moment even, to just um, take a moment for yourself, let, let everything to do with the outside world drop away, let your thoughts um, drop away. Uh, if you can just take a moment and just sit with your own presence, you can begin to make a relationship, you can begin to um, allow that source to, to well up inside you. And once that in action, um, action may not be the right word, once that's in flow within you freely, it will guide you through life and your relationships. Um, but it is, and for some that happens quickly, and others it, it takes I many, like many time. relationships. <laughs> A lifetime. Yeah. A lifetime even. Yeah. yeah. And some people on their deathbed finally realize when there's that peace. I mean, I, you know, I think we have this such a fear of death. And yet when my father died, there was a moment before, just before he passed, just before I watched his soul leave his body, when this peace uh, um, just came across him, his, his face and it was like everything was cleared away. Everything, ex there was you know, nothing to forgive. There was nothing, no. And in that moment, I could sense his peace. And um, he wasn't one for showing love outwardly, but he was a very loyal and um, honest, kind man. Strict, hard, but he could never show love and um, found it hard to be love shown to him but in that moment I could see that he was free from everything um, everything that he'd carried and he I watched his soul come out of his body before his heart stopped beating and I knew that he was free and he was home back in that ultimate peace that space mm -hmm. So we don't need to fear. Fearing death brings us to fearing life, brings us to clinging to things. Um, and it's all um, such an effort. And all that time you spend doing that, you could just be spending loving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It may sound so simple. Uh, some people will be going, oh, that's just not possible. Not with my job, my kids, my this, my that. It is possible. It is possible to, to feel that love and still live your life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fully. Mm -hmm. It just makes everything more. <sighs> peaceful and it just. It, it's the. It's. It just makes everything easier to bear. I mean, even pain. People go through terrible, terrible, terrible pain, and but if you can still feel that love inside you, mm. that pain <clears throat> is is like soothed. It's like love is a soothing mm. bar. Mm -hmm. Pain. It becomes your release. Yes, yes, mm. it is. It's mm. the ultimate release, mm -hmm. mm. and it's. It's it's beautiful and it's beautiful to see when people are in that in that place mm -hmm. in that space. It's not a place; it's a space. It's it's indescribable, actually, in human in words. Mm -hmm. as I'm always, always saying <laughs> words just don't cut it. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it reminds me of the beautiful teaching that love 
is a required course. Only the time you take it is up to you. Absolutely. And it is, that's true. And no matter, you know, I think in when I was younger, I used to want, I used to think I could go around spreading love and everybody would just suddenly realize that love was the way, you know, um, unconditional love and, but people just didn't get it. And I was, I was wasting, not wasting, I was putting a lot of effort and, and it, my own personal energy into trying to show people how to love when they weren't ready to see it. Um, and it is life experiences sometimes, sometimes the most painful ones that bring you back mm. to love. Mm -hmm. they, we may be born into the world and separate from it, but mm. some of the most, you know, the experiences that we have, if we can go with them, if we can trust that they are showing us the way back, it will bring us back to, yeah. to love. It, it, all expressions of love are maximal, yes. but they may not always have observable effects. No. And we need to trust. Trust, absolutely, that yes. Our only job, if we want to use that word, is to extend the love. Yes. The, and seed, trust the seed has been planted, you could use that metaphor, but it has been passed on. And it's, it's, it's not yes. to us to try and uh, determine when it when it's observable, when it has yeah. an effect. It's it, our only role is just extend it. Yes, I mean, if you imagine, I mean, the ripple effect is always a nice one. That you know, I may have sent incredible love to somebody twenty years ago, and they yes. may just be receiving it now. Yes, I yeah. can. I cannot decide with my mind. I have no authority mm -hmm. um, to decide when when somebody receives that love. Mm -hmm. um, but to to stop loving because you can't see an immediate result would be yeah. would be um, very sad. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, just continue mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. first of all to find that loving relationship within yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. first. If you don't have that. You don't have that. You, how can you possibly give it? Mm -hmm. But then, but then just yeah, just keep loving. I mean, just keep loving and and just know that it will it will the ripples of that love will affect probably far more people than than you realize. Probably more than the, maybe you may be concentrating on one person, but actually you may be affecting thousands. Yeah. And the the trust is the thing. Trust is something that people find very hard I think yeah or yeah. or the similar word would be faith 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 yes many people relate to faith but um, uh, I think you and I are on the same page when we speak the word trust yes. everything's unfolding in divine order yes and we have faith in that yes mm. faith is a good word too I love the word faith mm. yeah faith yeah. hope you know just 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 and trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't need to see the results of our love. We don't need. We're not. If we need to see the results of our love, we are not loving in the right way. That's right. Yeah. Because love has no um, agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. true, pure love yeah. has no agenda except to love, to, to embrace. Yeah. Um, so. If we're if we're if the mind is coming in and saying, well, I'm not going to love unless I get this, that, and the other, or unless I see some results, then you're not going. You you're going to have to really kind of re-examine what love is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I think that's a beautiful place to leave it for today. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lorna. And if people well, would like to uh, stay in touch with you, they can do so through your Facebook page, Sanctuary with Eden. With Yes. Okay. Sanctuary with Eden, and I, I'm very happy to hear from anybody. Um, and if they would like to talk to me on Skype, then we we can arrange that too. But, and they can, uh, they, reach, they can reach out to you through that Facebook page. Yes, they can message me privately, um, and I will I check the messages daily. So okay. Yes. All love to you, Lorna. And to you, Robert. Bless you. Bye bye. Thank you.
拜拜。